What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Pinetown Sports Podcast, hosted by Joey Miller. So in this episode, I'm going to give you a preview of all of the games in the Week 2 slate of the NFL season. We'll start off with the Giants at the Cardinals. The Giants are favorites in this game going to Arizona. Obviously a tough game for the Giants last week, but I think they respond and get back on track with the W today. My touchdown pick of the game is Darius Slayton, which... I was going to go Darren Waller being my touchdown pick, but I did say in a couple episodes now that Darius Slayton will be the wide receiver one for the Giants this season. So I'm going to go with Slayton being my touchdown pick of the game there between the Giants and Cardinals. Daniel Jones has to have a bounce back game. It really wasn't his fault last week considering he had no time to throw. But if he has a little bit of time to throw today, I expect 285 yards and two touchdowns from him. And at the end of the day, considering how bad the Giants were in offense last week, I would take 300 yards and two touchdowns all day because last week just a first down for the Giants was a hard thing to do so being able to throw for 300 yards and two touchdowns that would be huge the Giants will also have Darren Waller in the lineup today he's been battling an injury but having him in the lineup is obviously positive for Daniel Jones and the Giants in this game I have the Giants winning 27-17 Bears at the Bucks. I have the Bucks winning this one 30-24 Baker Mayfield looked pretty solid last week and I think Tampa Bay will be able to move the ball again today so I'm going to go 30, 24 bucks, and my touchdown pick in this game is Rashad White. Packers at Falcons. I think the Falcons win this game 24-20. My touchdown scorer of the game is B. John Robinson. For the Packers, they have no Christian Watson today, no Aaron Jones, and no David Bakhtiari as well. So even though last week was a positive start to the season for the Packers, they paid a price for it to some degree with three of their best players being out in today's game against Atlanta. And as you guys know, I think Atlanta is going to win that division this year in the NFC South. So I'm going to roll with Atlanta winning this one 24-20. And then one other thing I want to note about this game is that A.J. Dillon will be the lead back for the Packers today with Aaron Jones out. Colts at Texans. I have the Texans winning this one 21-17. And my touchdown pick is a touchdown catch by Tank Dell. I see two touchdown passes from C.J. Stroud in today's game. I think if you look at it, the Colts' defense isn't really great. Last week, C.J. Stroud had a solid debut. Didn't throw a touchdown, but he did have a solid debut. And as I've mentioned now many times, I think he is the best rookie quarterback. So I expect him to break out at some point and put up some numbers. So in today's game, two rookie quarterbacks going at it. Anthony Richardson, C.J. Stroud. I expect Stroud to play up today better than he did last week even though he was solid last week i think he's gonna throw some touchdowns today i want to see him sling it i want to see him air it out and i think tank dell is going to end up having a great connection with him at some point this season whether it's now or in a couple of weeks they're going to grow and have a great connection together so i'll take tank dell as a touchdown reception today as for the texans they will be without Jalen petrie in today's game which is a hit for their secondary and they will also be without their starting left tackle laramie tunsil which is obviously another loss on the other side of the ball now obviously on offense the next game is the Seahawks at Lions. I have the Lions winning this one 31-24. I think Seattle's overrated. I thought they were overrated coming into the year. And then after watching last week and losing to the Rams in week one, I think they're even more overrated. I'm going to go with the Lions winning this one 31-24. Considering how good they looked on opening night, their offense was clicking. They got a big win on opening night on the road at Arrowhead Stadium. It's a big way to start the season. And Jared Goff looked good in that game. My touchdown score in today's game will be Jameer Gibbs. A guy that looked great in his NFL debut last week, and I'm sure he's going to get some touches today. So Gibbs will be my touchdown pick. And one thing I want to say is I do apologize for my voice. I was at the BC football game yesterday. Great game between BC and Florida State. Ended up being a battle. Lost my voice. Ended up just getting into it and obviously going crazy when BC scored. So I do apologize for my voice being off. But hopefully the next day or two it should be back completely. Uh, the next game is the Chargers at the Titans. I'm going to go with the Chargers winning this one 30-27. to for my touchdown score of the game, I'm going to go with Derrick Henry with a rushing touchdown on the ground. The Titans fought pretty hard last week. It was Ryan Tannehill that held them back, though, and that's another worry for me in this game is that Ryan Tannehill has looked bad in week one, and I was not really high on him at the end of last season. I thought he was regressing over time, so I am going to pick against the Titans in this game yet again. As for a player I want to see break out, though, I want to see Traylon Burks get more opportunities. I think he could be a baller for them on offense. But he's not going to be able to do it if Ryan Tannehill doesn't look downfield and give him a shot. So hopefully Burks does get more opportunities as the season progresses. The Chargers will be without Austin Eckler in this game. So Josh Kelly will be getting a lot of work in today's game with Eckler out. The Titans do have DeAndre Hopkins, who is active for today's game. He is ready to play. Ravens at the Bengals. I have the Bengals winning this one 28-27. My touchdown score is Jamar Chase. I see a bounce back game for Joe Burrow in the Bengals offense. The Bengals had a tough loss last week to start the season. I think they respond today with a win. The Ravens are without their starting left tackle, Ronnie Stanley, starting center title, Linderbaum, starting cornerback, Marlon Humphrey, and starting safety, Marcus Williams. That's a lot of guys there that will be inactive for today's game. 
The Ravens do have Mark Andrews healthy, which is a good sign, but I'm going to go with the Bengals winning a close one, 28-27. The next game is Vegas heading to Buffalo. I'm going to go with Buffalo winning this one, 30-23, and my touchdown score is Devontae Adams. The Raiders are without a receiver who had a very big game last week. Jacoby Myers, he suffered a concussion in his monster game last week, unfortunately. So they will be without him today and Chandler Jones as well. So that's two big losses there, one on each side of the ball. I do think the Raiders can keep this close, though. I do have trust that they can win around eight or nine games a season. I think that was what I had in my predictions. So I'm going to roll with the Raiders keeping it close. But I think the Bills pull away at the end and win that one 30-23. Chiefs at Jaguars. I think the Jaguars get an upset win here, 27-24. I think if you look at it, the Chiefs losing in week one on Thursday Night Football after winning the Super Bowl, it creates a headline. Oh, my God, the Chiefs are 0-1 to start the year. A crazy headline would be this. Jacksonville, a team that's on the rise in the AFC, could be a potential AFC powerhouse for the next few years to come considering they have Trevor Lawrence on a rookie contract and a lot of talent that's young in that roster. It would be great to see a team on the rise beat them early in the season with Jacksonville, let's say, starting up 2-0. If Kansas City starts out 0-2, it would start a big headline across ESPN, Fox Sports, social media. Everyone's going to say, are the Chiefs in trouble? And if they do lose today, I think they would start a big winning streak after this and win, let's say, five straight games and put that whole narrative to rest. So I'm going to roll with Jacksonville winning this one 27-24. And my touchdown score in today's game is Kevin Ridley. Trevor Lawrence is 9-3 in his last 12 starts. Has really turned things around since his rookie year. His rookie year, he struggled a little bit. Last year was a big step up for him, and I think he takes a bigger step up this year as well. I see 285 passing yards and two touchdowns from him today. The Chiefs will have Chris Jones back today and Travis Kelsey. So two big additions, one on each side of the ball. But as I said, I like Jacksonville in this game to win 27-24. 49 is at Rams. Both teams are coming off big week one victories. The 49ers beating the Steelers pretty handedly in that game in week one. And then the Rams picked up a big win over the Seahawks last week, a big upset win. I'm going to go with the Rams, keeping this one close. Sean McVay is a great coach, even though he has struggled in his career against the 49ers. I think with the Rams being the home team, coming off a big win last week over Seattle, I think I'm going to give them the edge to keep it close in this game. But I think the Niners are the better team, so I'm going to go with the Niners winning this one, 27-23. And my touchdown score in today's game is the tight end for the Rams, Tyler Higby. Next up, Jets at Cowboys. I think the Cowboys win this one 24-14. I think the Jets can keep this one close since their defense is really good, and they do have a very good run game. Brees Hall, Dalvin Cook, two running backs that are great. But the problem is this. If Dallas goes up by a lot, the Jets will have to pass the ball a lot, meaning Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook won't be as effective in the run game, similar to Saquon Baku last week against the Cowboys. The Giants couldn't run the ball against Dallas since we were down by so much. We just had to pass, and then you have to neglect the run. So we'll see if that's the case today for the Jets. I think they can keep it close, though. People have completely given up on them because of Aaron Rodgers' injury, and rightfully so, Aaron Rodgers going down in the fourth play of the season completely kills a lot of the hope that people had around them winning the Super Bowl and being a playoff contender. But I do believe that Zach Wilson can keep them competitive. He had to come off the bench and make plays on Monday night, and he did enough for the win. Despite the one bad pick he had on Monday night, I think he is growing as a player. Considering how good he was in the preseason, I think he has a capability of keeping them competitive while he's the start of them for the rest of the season. I think Dallas is definitely a better team. I think they're a really good team on offense and defense, but I don't think they're as good as the Giants made them look last week. The Giants just completely rolled over in that game and gave up. So we'll see how good Dallas is. The Jets don't have Aaron Rodgers, obviously, so people have tempered expectations, and that's why Dallas is a heavy favorite in this game over the Jets. And I know a lot of people like to bring up Zach Wilson and his struggles. He's 8-14 as a starter, 16 passing touchdowns, 19 picks, and 23 games played. He obviously has struggled in his NFL career, but he did look very good in the preseason. He's learning from Aaron Rodgers now. We learned in the preseason and training camp from Aaron Rodgers, and now Aaron Rodgers is still going to the building and giving him some tips on the side, which is obviously huge considering Aaron Rodgers has seen just about every coverage in the NFL in his career. So it's great to have that voice in your ear giving you some tips on the game and giving you some opinions from what he sees from the sidelines. And I think one thing for Zach Wilson is that he has to just play it safe. Don't force passes. Let him manage the game like he did on Monday night, and that can help them get a win. That's a big way that the Jets ended up winning that game on Monday night. He has to do the same thing against Dallas today. I think Dallas is the better team. I still have them winning by two scores, 24-14. But if the Jets can let Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook run the ball and control the game on offense, it can help out Zach Wilson in the pass game. And now for my touchdown pick in this game, I'm going to go with Zach Wilson throwing a touchdown pass to Miko Hodman. Next up is Washington heading to Denver. I'm going to go with the Commanders winning this one, 24-23. And my touchdown pick in this game is Terry McLaurin. 
I liked what I saw out of Washington last week, even though they kept it close with Arizona. Their offense does have the capability of moving the ball. Considering I like Sam Howell, I think he's a solid quarterback. Even though I have him around like 23, I think I had him in my rankings, maybe 23 to 25. I think he's a solid quarterback, and I really like his weapons on offense. Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, Brian Robinson. I expect the Commanders to win this game on the road, even though they are underdogs. I believe in the Washington team more than I believe in Denver. So I'm going to go with Washington winning this one, 24-23. And now for my last game of the Sunday slate, the Dolphins at the Patriots on Sunday Night Football. I think the Dolphins win this one 32-20, and my score of the game is Tyree Kill. It's an easy pick there considering how good he looked last week. One guy I'm interested to see for Miami is Devon A. Chain, a rookie running back out of the backfield for them, who didn't play at all last week, really. He got hurt in the preseason, so he's just ramping back up to playing. But I'm hoping to see some touches out of him tonight. As for my prediction of the game, as I said, I'm going to go with the Dolphins winning this one 32-20. I think two attack of Aloha throws for 310 yards and three touchdowns. The Patriots did show a lot of guts last week, and they fought hard against Philly, especially after being down 16 nothing early in the game. They could have rolled over and just gave up. But they fought hard, made it a game at the end, even had a chance to win that game with the possession at the end. So obviously credit to the Patriots for not just giving up in that game. But I think this could be a tough game for them tonight. I think Miami's the better team, and they just have so much firepower at offense. Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, Raheem Oster, Devon A. Chain. There are so many weapons on that Miami offense. I think Miami wins this game by two scores. I'm going to go Miami winning this one 32-20. I know a lot of people over the week on Boston Sports Radio have been comparing to a tag of Aloha and Mac Jones, but I don't really think it's that much of a competition. Yes, they have similar abilities on the field, but I think Tua does have the better arm, and I think Tua is the better quarterback. I don't think that Miami would have the same success with Mac Jones at quarterback than they have with Tua tag of Aloha. I think Tua is the better quarterback, and I think he leads them to a big win on Sunday Night Football over the Patriots tonight. So now for the Monday night football games, there are two of them, Saints at Panthers. I think the Saints win this one 20-17, to and my touchdown pick is Jamal Williams on the ground. And then the other Monday night football game is the Browns heading to Pittsburgh. I think the Steelers win this game 30-20. to I see a big bounce back win for them. Pittsburgh struggled last week on offense, struggled on defense, but I think they are the better team than Cleveland. I feel like Cleveland is being overrated after week one. Yes, the Cleveland defense did look good, but Deshaun Watson still doesn't look great. He's still rusty. And I think if you look at it, the Steelers really did underperform last week. They really need to get a win tomorrow to get themselves back on track and be 1-1. One and, one. and the defense is a lot better than they looked last week. And I think their offense can be a lot better than they looked last week too. So I have the Steelers winning this one 30-20. And with the Jets potentially being now out of the playoffs considering Aaron Rodgers is out, we'll see how they look for the rest of the season. But considering Aaron Rodgers is done for the year, and who knows what Zach Wilson is going to look like with them, even though I am pretty high on Zach Wilson to at least keep them competitive. That could open up a playoff spot for the Chargers, maybe the Browns, maybe the Steelers. So this game will be big, I think, when you look back at the end of the season, considering you gain a game on a team you're going to be competing against for a playoff spot in the AFC. So now to finish up the episode, I'm going to give my fantasy football dream lineup of the week, not including Thursday Night Football. So I give you my leaders at each position in the fantasy football lineup. So quarterback, I think two attack of low is going to have the best week. At RB1, I have Derrick Henry. At RB2, I have Rashad White. At wide receiver one, I have Tyree Kill. At wide receiver two, I have Amon Ross St. Brown. At tight end, I have Darren Waller. At flex, I have Puka Nakua. And then the defense and special teams, this is kind of a hard one to pick. For the defense, I went with the Saints against Carolina. And then for kicker, I went with Jason Sanders, the kicker for the Miami Dolphins. I think Miami's going to put up points tonight. I have them scoring 32 points, so let's say three touchdowns and maybe a three or four field goals which should be enough for Jason Sanders to be the kicker of the week in fantasy football. Anyways, that will conclude this episode. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. As always, I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a good one, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Take it easy and stay well.